Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Katie. So today, in this video, we'll be learning about space. You know, space is a vast area. It's about so much of area. You know, even our planet Earth is there on the space. Yes. So today, we're gonna learn about the space. So we'll get into this video. So. Here, first we learn about NASA. There are some associations in space like NASA, ISRO, so on and so on. NASA's full name, even NASA is one of them. NASA's full form is National Aeronautical Space Association. Do we repeat? National Aeronautic Space Association. Right? Right. Now we learn about this NASA. On August 25, 1997, NASA launched the Advanced Composition Explorer to study the solar wind. What happened on August 25, 1997? This NASA launched the new satellite, the Advanced Composition Explorer. For what? To study the solar wind. Okay. This launched a new satellite that is the Advanced Composition Explorer to study the solar wind. On August 25, 1997, NASA launched the Advanced Composition Explorer or a satellite to study energetic particles traveling through space. Right? Here, on the same day that only NASA launched the Advanced Composition Explorer satellite, right? This is also called ACE satellite. We can also call this Advanced Composition Explorer as a satellite. Okay, they not only invented this to study the solar wind. They also designed this to study the energetic, part, energetic particles traveling through space. In space, you know, so many particles will be traveling, right? So many dust particles also, even some energetic particles. So it can also harm us, right? It can also harm some of the planets and so on. So only to know about this, NASA created this ACE satellite. It lifted off from Kennedy Space Center in Florida on a Delta II rocket and spent the next three and a half months making its way to its orbital post near the L1 Lagrangian Point. A point means a point of gravitational equilibrium between Earth and the Sun. What happened? This ACE satellite is there, no? It lifted off from Kennedy Space Center. What is Kennedy Space Center? The Space Center, there is one space center in Florida called Kennedy Space Center. This ACE satellite lifted off from Kennedy Space Center. On which rocket did it go? On a Delta II rocket. Which rocket did it go? Delta II rocket. And it spent next three months and a half months. For what? Making its way to its orbital post near the L1 Lagrangian point. What is L1 Lagrangian point? A point of gravitational equilibrium between Earth and the Sun. I do repeat. A point of gravitational equilibrium between Earth and the Sun. This is called L1 Lagrangian. So what happened? It lifted off from Kennedy Space Center in Florida and spent its uh, uh, next three months and a half months making its way to this orbital post near the L1 Lagrangian point. Understood? L1 Lagrangian means a point of gravitational equilibrium between Earth and the Sun. Next one. This, there, the spacecraft is monitoring. There, the spacecraft is monitoring the stream of accelerated particles coming from the sun known as the solar wind. So, the spacecraft went up. That spacecraft is monitoring the uh, what and all accelerate, accelerated particles are coming from the sun. These accelerated particles coming from the sun is known as the solar wind. The accelerated particles coming from the sun is called as solar wind. I do repeat, the accelerated particles coming from the sun is known as the solar wind. 
AC provides 24 by 7 continuous coverage of the solar wind which less scientists know when to expect geomagnetic storms that can disrupt communication satellites and power grids on earth. This AC satellite went up now. This AC satellite provides 24 hours, 7 days in a week continuously coverage of the solar wind. What is solar wind? The accelerated particles coming from the sun, right? Those, this solar wind it helps us to know. So, this AC provides, right? This, uh, it tells that uh, the solar wind is coming, those and all. This, this lets scientists know when this geomagnetic storms can come and even communication satellites and even power grids on earth. So only this AC satellite is very helpful. This is very helpful for us. It is for scientists. So it, they can easily know when to expect geomagnetic storms that can disrupt satellites and also power grids on Earth. Right? This geomagnetic storm so it disrupts communication satellites and power grids on Earth. This geomagnetic storms, it can even make destroy the power grids on earth that's that's why they created this ac satellite to know so only easily the scientists can identify the solar wind when it is coming and even they can even get to know geomagnetic storms when it can disrupt the communication satellites and power grids on earth now Mars used to be much wetter than scientists thought. So, scientists thought Mars was okay, wet. But, it's much wetter than the scientists thought. They, a new map of mineral deposits on Mars could not only change our understanding of past water distribution on the red planet, but also help create a roadmap for the future Mars exploration, including crewed missions. So, they created a new map of mineral deposits on Mars. This could not only change our understanding of past water distribution on the red planet, but this also helps to create a roadmap for the future Mars exploration, even including crewed missions. Okay, the new map has revealed an unexpected abundance of minerals created by the interaction of rock and water with hundreds of thousands formerly water rich areas discovered in some mass most ancient regions. So they created a new map called mineral deposits on Mars. This revealed an unexpected abundance of what? Minerals. How these minerals were created by the interaction of rock and water. Rock and water got interacted and these minerals formed with hundreds of thousands. This have hundreds and thousands of formerly water rich areas. Okay, this mass has hundreds of thousands of water rich areas discovered in mass. Most ancient regions. Okay, understand? We will go for next slide. The map could lead to a more detailed investigation of Martian geology that could reveal what happened when Mars changed from a planet quite like Earth to the dry and arid world we see today and whether the planet was ever capable of supporting life also. This map is there now. They created this uh, mineral deposits of Mars map. This could lead more uh, detailed about the uh, Martian geology. The, what happens when we know about Martian geology? This Martian geology could reveal what happened when Mars changed from planet quite like Earth. Okay, it was just like Earth, but it now changed to dry and arid world. Okay, and even we'll get to know if the planet was supporting life. Okay, I think we have collectively oversimplified mass. John Carter, assistant and professor of planetary science at Institute. Hmm. Now, 
Astrophysics used by DLA Paris Sakli University, who was part of team behind the map, said in a statement, The evolution from laws of water to no water is not as clear cut as we thought. The water didn't just stop overnight. Okay, see, there is a university called Astrophysics U Spatiale Paris Sakli University. So, this university was helping to make that map this uh, this was part of the team behind the map they said in a statement the evolution from lots of water to know what is not as clear cut as they thought but the water didn't just stop overnight okay the water didn't just stop overnight next one Now, Carter also explained that mass more complex geology may be more similar to that of a planet than previously thought. Carter explained like that Mars has more complex geology. Okay. This makes it more similar to that of a planet than we previously thought. We see a huge diversity of geological context so that no one process a simple timeline can explain the evolution of the mineralogy of Mars. The researcher continued. If you exclude life processes on Earth, Mars exhibit a diversity of mineralogy in geological settings, just as Earth does. Now we'll go to the next one about Mars. Um, the map has been created using over a decade worth of data collected by the European Space Agency's ESA Omega instrument on the Mars Express spacecraft and the CRISM means compact reconnaissance imaging spectrometer for Mars instrument on NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Now what happened? This map was created no in this map they used a decade worth of data not it they didn't take a decade but they used the decade equal to decade worth of data okay who collected this decade decade worth of data european space agencies esa Omega Mars Express Observatory for La Mineralogy IE List Places Activity Instrument on the Mars Express Spacecraft Omega Instrument on the Mars Express Spacecraft in the CRISM CRISM means Compact Reconnaissance Imaging Spectrometer for Mars Instrument on NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter of particular interest on the map are the traces of water rich minerals and rocks that were changed into clays and salts through interactions with water in the red planet planet's distant past so what happened so much of particular interest on the map was the traces of water rich minerals and the rocks that were changed into clays the rocks were changed into clays and Salts through interaction with water. Salts through interaction with water. Salts got interaction with water. This and the red planet's distant past and water rich minerals were particular interest on the map. Next. Different water rich clays and minerals are created when water interacts with rocks in a variety of conditions. So how different water rich clays and minerals are created when water gets interact with rocks in a variety of conditions then water rich clays and minerals are getting created when small amounts of water interact with volcanic rock clay minerals such as mectite and vermiculite form these retain many of the same chemical elements particularly iron and magnesium as the volcanic rocks that birthed them so what when small amounts of water interact with volcanic rock clay minerals was formed 
what clear minerals such as mectite and vermiculite form this mectite and form vermiculite retain many of the same chemical elements particularly iron and magnesium as the volcanic rocks that birthed them i do repeat iron and magnesium as the volcanic rocks that birthed them okay next okay the next one when large amounts of water interact with the rocks however the clays that are formed are less than progenitor rocks as soluble elements are washed away this leaves aluminium rich clay like kaolin in their wake so when large amounts of water interact with rocks clays that are formed less like the progenitor rocks as soluble in elementary in elements are washed away okay this leaves what aluminium rich clay like kaolin in their wake i do repeat this leaves aluminium rich clay like kaolin in their wake up to a decade ago researchers were only aware of around 1000 such clay rich outcrops on mars this meant aqueous clays were considered geological oddities and suggested that there were limitations to how much water had been on mars in the past and for how long it had been preserved okay up to a decade ago this researchers thought around 1000 only, only they know that 1000 such clays were there the rich outcrops on mars this meant aqueous clays were this aqueous clays they were considered as geological oddities okay and then suggested that there were limitations there were limitations to how much water had been on mars in the past and for how long that uh, it had been preserved okay we'll go to the next slide The new map shows that surprisingly these minerals are more prevalent than scientists thought indicating the water played a much bigger role in shaping the geology of mars okay the this new map shows that surprisingly these minerals are more prevalent than scientists thought it is more precious than scientists thought indicating that water played a much bigger role in shaping geology of mars this work has been has now established that when you are studying the ancient terrains in detail not seeing these minerals is actually the oddity carter added not only do these results suggest that water has prevalent and important in shaping mars but that the formation of clays and salts on the red planet is more complicated than previously suspected okay Thank you for watching this video guys we'll meet you in the next video next video okay what will be our next video about space part 2 or anything else comment down in the comment section and don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell icon that would help me a lot and don't forget to comment below bye everyone we'll meet you in the next video